In all of Chinese history, the Manchu pigtail was the haircut that caused the greatest controversy. The 1870s sanitary ordinance, intended to prevent unhealthy tenement conditions in San Francisco, overcrowded jails, promoting the pigtail ordinance. The sanitary ordinance required a fine or week or more in jail, but many impoverished Chinese immigrants welcomed free accommodation and board. The supervisors began shaving all convicts' heads to prevent lice and fleas. However, many equal rights supporters argued the supervisors' ultimate objective was to stop willing Chinese inmates. Late 19th century Chinese immigration to the United States increased. By 1880, California had 100,000 Chinese residents. 90% of immigrants were men who came to the U.S. to support their families. They had to keep their Q braids to avoid being branded revolutionary as most of them returned to China. The pigtail ordinance was intended to deter Chinese immigrants from violating the city's sanitary code. Anti-Chinese animosity drove the pigtail ordinance, trying to deter Chinese immigrants from coming to the U.S. Since 1644, Han men in China had to wear a Q braid and shave their foreheads to show their allegiance to the Xing dynasty. Han Chinese had a Q braid on the back of their heads because they had long hair. They strongly opposed forehead shaving. In 1644, the Manchus stormed the Great Wall with renegade leader Wu Sangui and seized the Ming Kingdom, introducing the haircut to the Han people. Manchus conquered the Ming Emperor this year. Dorgon, the new Xing region, implemented several changes to stabilize the empire. These reforms included dismissing the more troublesome court eunuchs, reinstituting the imperial examination system, restricting Manchu Han intermarriage, abolishing foot binding, and requiring Han men to dress in Manchu fashion and braid their hair into a queue identical to those worn by the Manchus. The collected records of the Northern Alliance during the reigns of three emperors which were written in the 12th century, described the traditional Manchu hairstyle. According to these records, Manchu men shaved their foreheads and braided the hair in the back of their heads into a braid that hung straight down. This hairstyle was known as the Bianzi. This tradition was diametrically opposed to the one practiced by the Han men, who, upon reaching adulthood, were barred from shaving their heads. It was considered particularly humiliating for Han nobles who prided themselves on their highly individual, stylized haircuts, which were typically worn long and bundled up in elaborate buns and ponytails. Protests and a series of peasant revolts forced Dorgon to scale back the order. Dorgon issued the first hair-shaving edict shortly after the Xing conquest. However, Dorgon decided to reintroduce the order on torture and death in July of 1645. He did this by deploying troops into the cities to masquerade as barbers and yell the phrase, Your hair or your head! In many locations, enforcement of the Bianzi was low since many officials were hesitant to prosecute the problem too aggressively or acknowledge signs of rebellion in their own region. This led to lax implementation of the order. However, over the course of time, it began to take hold, which resulted in feelings of bitterness. The order also effectively mobilized a great number of Ming loyalists to take up weapons once more, which sparked a century of revolt that historians sometimes refer to ironically as the anti-hair shaving campaign. These forms of resistance include men like Zhang Dai, a historian from the 17th century who chose to become a hermit rather than submit to the scissors. In point of fact, however, the majority of people gradually came around and begrudgingly accepted the tonsure as well as the Xing authority. Males were compelled to shave off all of their hair except for a patch the size of a coin in the back and a thin braided lock hanging down. By the time the Xing dynasty came to an end, men were only required to shave their foreheads. Despite this, there were numerous symbolic acts of resistance, such as removing the braid from the end of the pigtail, allowing the hair to hang loose, or donning a turban to hide the style. Long hairs or hairy rebels were the name given to those who participated in the Taiping Rebellion during the 19th century. This on-and-off history of hair resistance towards the cue braid was to prove to be long and complex with bizarre interludes such as the sorcery scare of 1768 
when it was alleged that magicians were cutting and shaving men's Q-braid for supernatural uses. During the time, the Q-braid was thought to be a tool for sorcery. By the time Xing Dynasty was come to an end in the early 20th century, the Q-braid had once again solidified its position as a representation of oppression. According to the author Lu Zun, who called his character A Q after the haircut, the Chinese people in those days revolted, not because the country was on the point of disaster, but rather because they were forced to wear a Q braid. When a Chinese high jumper apparently touched the bar with his Q during the athletics competition in 1910, the North China Herald claimed that a foreign observer said it was one of many useless appendages that the Chinese needed to get rid of. Intentionally, it was also a mark of disgrace. The Xing Empire had been shown to be one of these appendages. It had been brought down as a result of corruption and poor administration. Towards the end of the dynasty, rebels in Guangdong, Tianjin, Shanghai, and the Northeast formed Hua Costume, and haircutting associations. In an act of pragmatic revolt, they cut their Bianzi and adopted traditional Han clothing. Even the Xing army announced that it would make all troops adopt short hair by 1912 in a desperate attempt to modernize. When the Xing Empire fell in 1911, Han Chinese all around the country celebrated by having their hair chopped. The long braided pigtail or queue that they had been forced to use as a symbol of Manchu oppression since 1644 was discarded as a symbol, and a wave of new hairstyles began to sweep the country along with the promise of the newly reformed Republic of China. Things came full circle with the Republic of China's 1912 hair cutting edict, which saw revolutionaries forcefully cutting the Bianzi of pedestrians in the street amidst intense protest by traditionalists. With the encouragement of his British tutor, the last Xing Emperor, Hu Yi, cut his own queue in 1922, putting an end to this hairy history. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.